from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of all my colleagues, and in particular, Dr. Mary Jane Deeb, Chief of the African and Middle East Division, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone. I'm Joan Weeks, head of the Near East Section, sponsor of today's program. In continuation of the Persian Book Lecture Series, with its 2016 focus on literature and performing arts, today's program shines a spotlight on the Afghan Women's Writing Project with poetry readings and visual arts. But before we get started with today's program and introduce our speaker, I'd like to give you a brief overview of our division and its resources in the hopes that you'll come back uh, and use the collections and this reading room for your research. This is a custodial division, which is comprised of three sections that build and serve the collections to researchers around the world. We cover over 75 countries and more than two dozen languages. The Sub-Sahara or Africa section covers all the countries in Sub-Sahara Africa. The Hebraic section covers Hebraica worldwide. And the Near East section covers all of the Arabic countries, including North Africa, the Arab countries of the Middle East, Turkey, Turkey Central Asia, Iran, Afghanistan, and the Muslims of Western China, Russia, the Balkans, and the people of the Caucasus. So you see it encompasses a very wide region. After the program, we would like to invite you to fill in uh, the evaluation forms that you see on your seats today. That helps us uh, design and look forward to future programs with your comments. We would also like to invite you to ask questions at the end, but if you do, uh, since we're being filmed today, uh, you're giving your permission uh, by asking those questions to be filmed. So now I would like to call upon Harad Dinavari, our Iranian world specialist, to introduce our speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. And thank you everyone for coming. I know it's a uh, day after a holiday and people are just now getting familiar with summer and uh, it's in the middle of the day. So I realize coming here is a, can be a little bit of a issue, but I'm very glad to have everyone here. I wanna take a second and introduce our wonderful speaker, uh, Ms. Mahnaz Rezaei. Uh, Mahnaz was born in uh, Western Afghanistan and um, she was raised in a family that valued education immensely. Uh, as a child, when the Taliban invasion had started, uh, she and her family fled, not to return for a number of years. Eventually, she did go back um, and uh, was able to get a scholarship to continue her education in the United States in 2005. Uh, Ms. Rezaei is a writer for the Afghan Women's um, Writers Project, uh, a website that she will be showing you and featuring. Um, and is now a mentor for the online uh, daddy uh, or daddy Persian workshops for women in Afghanistan who do not speak or write in English. She's also a filmmaker who has um, been honored at the recent Women in the World Summit in New York for her short films and explores how wearing a hijab affected her relationships um, when she first came to the United States. And currently, uh, Ms. Rezaei is in a master's program in the Cochrane School of Arts and Design in, in George Washington University in Washington, D.C., and is working on a novel. She also has uh, uh, been accepted as, a, a, as an intern to the Washington Post. She will be starting an internship in June, and she will be there in, in the film department. Um, at the end of this program, uh, there is a very interesting book, um, essentially um, washing the dust uh, from our hearts in both uh, Persian, Daddy Persian, and English. Um, and Mr. Zai will make this book available for those of you who are interested. Without taking any more time, I'm going to ask Mahnaz Khanum uh, to come up here and give us uh, her wonderful presentation. Thank you for the kind introduction, Hirojan. Um, uh, 
Hello and welcome everyone. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here and thank you all for coming um, to hear the voice of Afghan women today. First, uh, I want to um, explain a little bit about the Afghan Women's Writing Project. Uh, Afghan Women's Writing Project is an online uh, um, program, it's an online workshop. So I'm going to show you the website. This is the website for Afghan Women's Writing Project. It started in 2009 when um, a journalist, her name is Masha Hamilton, the founder of Afghan Women's Writing Project. When she went to Afghanistan, uh, after she saw a, a woman got killed and shot to death uh, in Qazi Stadium in Kabul, she was uh, wondering what was the story behind this woman that she had uh, eight children and she was killed by Taliban. And she wanted to know the story and she went to Afghanistan and she researched and asked about this woman. But she didn't find out the story behind this woman and she felt there are many stories uh, that are being untold in Afghanistan, especially women, uh, they don't have a voice. So she started this online project with five students and she thought that she needs to help women to voice their concerns, to write about their day-to-day -day life to write about their stories, their sadness, their happinesses. So the workshop started with five students and right now we have 445 students. They, um, we started with, when, with one English workshops and right now we have nine English workshops, two dairy workshop and one Pashto workshop. The, uh, in Afghanistan, we have two um, official language. One is Pashto and the other one is Dari. So um, there are workshops on the site also. Uh, Afghan Women's Writing Project works in five uh, provinces in Balkh, Bamiyan, Ghazni, and Herat in, and Kabul. And they also have writers in Kandahar. And um, we have, uh, as I said, uh, 445 uh, writers enrolled. We have uh, 111 mentors who are journalists, who are um, teachers around the United States, and they are all working voluntarily with Afghan Women's Writing Project. The way the workshop works is that um, students are enrolled in uh, online workshops, and there are like Google groups, and they send uh, uh, the mentors, they sent uh, weekly prompts, like write about mother, write about um, like what is the value of life for you. They give, they sent weekly prompts to students, one or two weekly prompts, and they ask a student, if you don't like this prompt, we can write about other issues. And a student usually writes uh, poems, they write uh, short stories and they send or articles and they send to these mentors. And the mentors work with them to um, help them polish their work. If there, there are mistakes, they help them. So it is a learning process for this woman. They, they get help. Afghan Women Writing Project give them a platform to write about their issues and to learn another language. And if they want to write in their own language, they, they can write in Dari or Pashto for people who do not know English or they can't uh, write in English. And we also have another wonderful, amazing program that we reach to, out, uh, to women who are illiterate. So we have oral stories. We reach out to women who want to tell stories and they don't have, uh, they can't write. And then we collect those oral stories and we, uh, we, uh, we record they, their voices uh, and then we put them online. So this is the, another stage that we are working uh, to have them on the website. So I'm going to uh, start with one of my poems that was published in the book, Washing the Dust from Our Heart. And this is a, a collection of uh, poems from our students that was published in this anthology. An Afghan Women's Writing Project has published two anthology. This is the second one. The title of the poem is When We Were King and Queens. 
When I think of my childhood, I remember the old days when I was a little girl with black braided hair like goat horns. In summer, my five siblings and I would sit on a wooden bed, the huge bed my father made in the middle of yard. First, we threw little rugs on the bed, then we fought to get the best corner. The breeze was our playmate. She brushed our faces, cooled our hearts, slapped the mosquitoes and flies. Like a scented friend, it carried the aroma of flowers and wheat from farther fields. Our house in a vast meadow with few other houses was a little flower in a bare garden. But we didn't feel alone. God was also our neighbor. We laughed on the wooden, we laughed on the wooden bed, drank black tea, and played with marbles as our white dog jumped happily, circling the bed like, it, like as if it were a sacred shrine. I loved her small puppies rolling on the d dusty ground with them, swirling them around by their little paws and bursting into laughter. They were like balls of cotton. I kissed their paws and cursed them with love. Some neighbors said, dogs are nudges, filthy, but I treasured them. They played with us. They protected our house, barking at strangers and enemies. Their yelps were small and screechy, but their will was strong. How could anyone call them unclean? They were little angels. God wouldn't create filthy things. Sometimes we didn't have bread in the house. I was hungry. So mother gave me a piece of bre dried bread and said, share it with the dog. She is also hungry. Her kindness reminds me of when she cooked okra with kichiri. We sat on the wooden bed. We ate in the moonlight. We didn't have electricity, but our hearts were bright and happy. As we laughed, our teeth shone like the stars. We named the stars to own them. My eyes, like a basket, I picked them until they escaped from my eyes and entered my heart. In my best childhood memories, we were all together. Me, my siblings, my mother, my father, we weren't yet broken by war or separated each thrown to a corner of the earth. With free minds and happy hearts, we laughed together and adored simple things. On the wooden bed, we were kings and queens. Thank you very much. So I want to explain a little bit how did I got involved with this um, project. Uh, it was in, um, I came to the United States and got a scholarship in 2009. And then I, re I received the Davis Peace Project to go back to Afghanistan to do a, a peace project. And in Afghanistan, I saw an email. I, saw, I read a poem. It was a poem that was from Afghan Women's Writing Project. And it was so beautiful and emo um, uh, emotional that um, it made me cry. And I immediately wanted to be part of this program. So I contacted the founder and I told her that I want to be part of this program. And she said, yeah, uh, you're welcome, come uh, join us. And then I got involved. So I started in 2010 with them as a writer. I started writing for them and then um, after a few years, um, they started their diary program and they asked me to be the mentor for their diary program for students who are in Afghanistan and they do not speak or write in English. And um, I started the diary program, a diary workshop, and now we have a second diary workshop, and soon we are going to have a third diary workshop, which is a great honor. So today we have some of other uh, Afghan women's writing uh, writers with us, some of the students who live in the United States. Usually the students that we enroll uh, they all need to be, uh, unless in Afghanistan, they start in Afghanistan with us, or they can be refugees. But um, 
for women, Afghan women who are here, um, like we can't work with them. For with the refugees that we worked were either in Iran or Pakistan. So some of the students who are in the United States, they first started with uh, Afghan Women's Writing Project in Afghanistan. And today we have uh, one of our uh, great writers, Marzia John, that she will be reading uh, for us. War. To buy his family's safety, your father spends every Afghani he has saved for the last 30 years. Your mother sells her jewelry so she can feed you and your brothers and sisters. Your brother gives up his beloved car and you give up your education because you have no other option. Gunfire and rockets like the devil screaming wake you up in the middle of the night. The explosions vibrate through your heart. Nothing can calm you, not even your mother's arms. You see torn bodies on the TV, mothers like crying over their son's corpses. Widows weep for their children. Who will feed them today? War means living in fear with families torn apart. Flowers lose their color, become gray, dark circles under your eyes, your skin pale. You see everything in black and white, cannot feel the sun's, the sun's warmth, the wind's breeze, see how bright the moon and stars. Your best friend flees to another place. You miss her, become lonely, isolated. She was the one you shared your secrets with and played with. You don't feel safe without her, not even in your own bedroom. War means poverty. People care for food. Parents sell their children. Children sell opium. Girls marry old men. Teenagers take responsibilities that are too big. They feel old, began to be cruel, see things they shouldn't, do things they shouldn't. See, you see women killed. Of course, they have been raped first because they are honored by their enemies. And yes, you see yourself used as a tool of war and sold because no one can protect you. War makes the war warlord thirstier and thirstier. He cares only about himself seeks to drink power, becomes blind, deaf, a liar. With no laws, no rules, you make no goals anymore for your unknown future. You become cheap, worthless. War means nightmares for you, your family, your world. Every single sound scares you. War tests as terrible as it is. You have no appetite, not even for your favorite meal. Thank you. Thank you, Marzia John. So we have another uh, AWWP writer. She is my sister. I'm very happy that she is here with us today. She recently graduated from um, St. Michael's College in Vermont, and she moved here uh, like a week ago. <laughs> so please welcome her. Thank you, Mahmoud John, and thank you all for coming. So today, I'm going to share two of my pieces that it got published uh, in Afghan Woman Writing Project. The first piece is a poem that I wrote. Break the rule. I want to break the rule and say I am in love. My people taught me not to love someone because I am a woman, because I am a girl, because of my gender, because of my culture because of my religion. No, God is not against love. He loves the one who is in love. I am in love, yes. I am a girl and I am in love. Let me love the one who I want. Let me choose the one who I love. Let me experience what love is. Let me have something that I want for myself. Men can fall in love, but women cannot. Why? We do not have a heart. We don't have feelings. We don't have choice. We are not human. Love is pure. Love is holy. Love is valuable. 
It is not against the law. It is not against religion. It is not against culture. It is not against humanity. But if it is against the, the rule, I want to break this rule and say, I am in love. And I love that I am in love. Thank you. My second piece is Culture Shock. And I wrote this um, in 2011. I didn't know the meaning of culture shock before I came to United States, but now I do. As an international student coming from a religious conservative country like Afghanistan to study in a liberal democratic country like the US, the move definitely shocked my nerves and appetite for a while. When I, fir when I first al arrived, it was the superficial matters that grabbed my attention, like clothing, talking, hairstyle, and fashion. I was shocked the first time I saw a woman wearing bikinis in the public near uh, the beach. We have public bathhouse for women in my country, but what embarrassed me was um, seeing women talking to men who were with them. The men had a life view of 99% of women's naked body. I may have shocked them as well because I was walking on the beach fully dressed with my scarf on. Afghans are always trying to avoid the sun, so they will not get tan, but some Americans um, love to be out in the sun even though they know about the skin cancer. Also, tattoos are, uh, are common here, but seeing whole body tattoo was shocking. What if the design gets boring next year, or what if a man's wife doesn't like it? Pets, especially dogs, are dear in this cult country, sometimes dearer and closer than family members. I didn't know how hard it was to take care of them, bath them, and feed them, or even play with them. Yes, in United States, they even have vaccination for their pets. We just started the vaccination process for children in our country, and almost half of the population has never ever had a vaccine in their lives. It is still shocking for me to know that in some countries, animals are valuable as humans. Also, I still cannot eat rice properly with a fork. It's frustrating seeing the grains escape from prongs when I am hungry. It is interesting how forks and knives are important in most of meals in US. In Afghanistan, I only use a knife for peeling and cutting fruits. I think that's polite when American says, excuse me, after yawning and, or sneezing. But what about blowing the nose? That was the most funny and uh, disgusting culture shock I experienced. In my culture, it is impolite to blow your nose in front of others. However, sometimes it made me laugh and reminded me of the jokes I heard from my friends when I was a child. Americans like books and enjoy reading books, magazines, and newspapers. We can find people reading during the day, at night, or um, like on the bus, or in the hospital waiting room. But it was shocking for me to learn that we can even find books and magazines in American bathrooms. Sometimes being in different culture help one learn about values and um, deficiencies of our own culture. People teach us about their own lifestyles and we teach them the way we live. No one has to follow the others, but the point is to appreciate human beings existence and our uniqueness.
Thank you. So in two years ago, I got admitted to Corcoran School of Art and Design at the New Media Photojournalism program. And after a year, I spoke with my program director and told her that I want to um, find a way. I want to um, make a collaboration between um, Corcoran School of Art and Design with the Afghan Women's Writing Project. And since we, ha we have a um, uh, photography department uh, at the Corcoran School, and even in my program, we do a lot of photography and video making. I said, why don't we choose an Afghan woman point and respond to it via art? Why? Uh, um, because it will be a collaboration between American students and Afghan women. And my uh, supervisor, she loved the idea, and we started the Blue Wings project. The Blue Wings project uh, is a collaboration between the Afghan Women Writing Project and um, Corporal School of Art and Design, and we invite all different artists to respond to uh, an Afghan woman's poem through art, whether it is um, photography, short video, animation, any uh, form of art. And uh, last uh, m uh, March 8th, we had a very big event that we celebrated all the uh, artistic pieces that were done on Afghan women's uh, writing project uh, and Afghan women's uh, poems. And today I'm going to show you some of those pieces. And, um, So some of the students chose to do uh, photography. And I'm going to read the poem that um, one of the students did this uh, photograph based on. The poem is uh, by Roya, and the title of poem is Remembering 15. And I feel so young, pains start growing inside of me. I begin to hear, you have to. Have to, have to. I have to live with have to. I have to buy a burqa and hide the word under it. I have to forget the sun. To talk about the moon is a risk. I have to wear clothes people choose, the colors they dictate. I have to live with negative imperatives. Don't laugh, don't speak loudly. Don't look at men, shut up. I am hearing I am bored of hearing, don't, don't, don't. I am 15, and the boy I can't forget waits on the street to see me with my burqa on the way to Lala's bakery and gives me postcards of birds flying in a sky filled with freedom. He knows my smell. Love is blind for him. He lives with the smell of a woman. And Mama always says, be like other people, be like other people. I wonder if I agree. I have to learn how to bear the pain of being human, the pain of being a woman, the pain if dad discovers the postcard hidden between the bricks of the wall, the pain if the neighbor's naughty son steals the postcards, the pain if dad says never ever go to the bakery. The pain if the rain washes the mud off the wall, where the letters are hidden. The rain does wash the mud away, along with his words on the letter. I love you, and I love your blue burqa. But the rain can't wash his love from my heart. The rain can't wash the pain from my heart. Still, I keep my blue burqa in the Museum of Women, Memos. Still, I paint the birds with blue wings. And Mama still says, be like other people. Be like other people. And Mama still says, be like other people. And Mama. So here are some of the um, photographs and videos that I'm going to show. They are being done on different poems.
ocean. I imagine being free of the harsh claws gripping my thoughts, making me feel helpless and clueless. I envision expressing myself as free as a noble man and I do not mean curses and insults I mean free to speak up and make decisions I appeal for respect and love so these are some of the things uh, that have been done on women's poems and we have uh, many more um, some of the students did sonotypes uh, some did uh, screen printing and uh, we are going to work with the um, music and also theater department for next year and we are going to have the same blue wings uh, um, like event reading and art uh, event um, for next year, uh, inshallah. And right now I'm going to um, ask another um, um, writer. She actually writes um, poems in, um, in Dari. She is not uh, um, a WWP member, but she was very kind to um, come today and read uh, one of the poems from another student. Please welcome Mojgan John. Welcome to everyone. Big clan by Sharia. I'm lost in a big clan of constant bloodshed. No one, uh, no one is with me. I'm alone, alone in the darkness. I'm watching, playing, singing my best song in darkness. I don't know anything about myself. We are I am who I am. There is no one to share with me, but I will rise in the darkness sky of Afghanistan to bring back the shining sun. I want to change the darkness to light. Give, co give courage to my, my people, the courage to be together, so no one feels alone. Of, if only each of us will uh, see, we are together in this land. We don't our people bleeding. We don't want more killing. Instead of fighting, we should be welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mojlanja. So I'm going to read uh, another poem of mine that I wrote about uh, my father. My father, conqueror of my heart. When I say my father is a hero, it's not a slogan. It's not praise. It's a fact. Here's the truth behind an Afghan man. But let me not tell you. Let me show you. The sun was a scorching when my father worked in a 20-floor building that scared the soul. Attached to a string, my father found bread from his blood to feed his six children with the trust of his heart. My father's hands are tough as leather, the most beautiful, sacred hands, precious leather that fought off, us, off disappointment and brutality of pains and hammer blows. In the midst of hard days of immigration, 
My father raised our spirit. He said, educate yourself and thrive. He fixed the school's chairs and desk, mended their broken hearts and legs in exchange, in exchange for our education. Like the carpenter Noah, he saved us. As I sat on the wooden bench in the class, I cursed the desk and said, we are in this together, friend. And I studied hard to bloom more of my father's hopes. My aunts and other talked absurd. They didn't believe in a girl's education. Their words like swords stabbed me in my heart and throat. As scared of people's talk, my brothers didn't want me to work, but my dad upheld my rights and broke the tortured silence. He said, nobody should force my daughter to do anything she doesn't like. Then he drove me to work on his motorbike, proud of carrying his daughter, a teacher, letting the wind blow the bitter looks. In the center of Herat, my father and I have a spirit have a favorite spot where we talk and laugh and eat shiriach. Like a true hero who values others' happinesses, my father sacrificed his youth for us. His every white hair a thread of diamonds, every sentence a fountain of wisdom. My father is a hero who lifts up a world of struggles, giving meaning to others' lives. And I'm very happy and honored to have my father and mother today with me also. <laughs> they, they recently came for my sister's graduation and my graduation. So um, these were all the um, poems uh, that I chose for today to read for you all. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you have any questions, Madam Minister, I have a request. Sure. Could you take one of the poems you read and do at least two or three days of the version of Gary and then also with the translation? I think it really makes an impact in the original. Sure, sure. So um, the book uh, is both in Persian and uh, in, in Dari and also in English. So I'm going to read. Uh, some of the translation that were done uh, based on uh, some of the poems. Mahe asal dar Guristan. Man balhay nili dar pirahanam mibafam. Gunjesh khara dar asin hayash miduzam. در چادرم آسمانی دودی نقش می کنم. اخبار حاکی از انیسه بود که از خانه فرار کرده و حکیم دل باخته و سنگسار گشته. امیدوار بود با او عروسی کند. او نیز با او سنگسار شد. پسر کوچکم او می گرید. من گرسنم. به آشپزخانه می روم. گویی که قلبم را می پزم. وقتی ظرف ها را می شویم هر یک گلاس و قاب را که بیسایم آرزو می کنم کاش می توانستم تقدیر این دو دل داده را نیز پاک سازم. به موهای پسرم شانه می زنم. دستانم تارهای امید را در سر جوان او نوازش می کنند. برای روشنی دعا می خانم. کتابچه خاطرات را برداشته و می نویسم که من خستم از دیزن چشمان اشکبار زنان. خسته از شنیدن صدای حزین آنان، ناامید، حراسان، انیسه و حکیم سنگسار گشتن. من از نوشتن اشعاری که بوی قم دارند بیزارم. And I'm going to read the uh, English version for you guys.
honeymoon in the graveyard. I am knitting blue wings into my dress, sewing sparrows in, it, in its sleeves. I draw a scarf a smoke on my scarf. The evening news reports that Anissa, who escaped from her house, was stoned. She loved Hakim, wished to marry him. He was stoned with her. My little boy cries, I am hungry. Run to the kitchen, cook my heart. When I wash the dishes, scrubbing each plate and glass, I wish I could clean the destiny of the unlucky couple. I comb my son's hair. My hands touch strands of hope on his young head. I pray for the light. I grab my notebook, write that I am tired of seeing tears in women's eyes tired of hearing their sad voices, helpless, worried, Anissa and Hakim stoned. I'm tired of writing poems that smell like sorrow. Another poem uh, I would like to read is by Satara. I, apo I apologize. I apologize. Not because I am a weak person, or because I am shy, or powerless, or immature, or poor. I apologize not because it makes me less than I am. I apologize because I am strong, because I believe in humanity, and because I have self-confidence, and because I am sick of sin. I apologize because my life is full of dreams, and because I want to see everyone happy. I apologize because apology is a way of ending hostility. And because my heart is full of love. And because I want to make the world a peaceful place, a place full of love and forgiveness. Do we have more time to read more? How to heal the world by Fariba. This is the beginning way for love and forgiveness. The end of the way is not clear to me because in this moment, love and forgiveness are are lovable to me. I want to write about you here in this poem, about your eyes, their spring song, about your tender words, their smile of simplicity and honesty. When you are not with me, I say Allah Hafiz to everyone. Without you, my beloved, I am silent without laughter or the speech. Come to me, open your eyes, the windows to my darkness, my solitude. Return home, return again. Share the beat of my heart with all the worst people who have failed in love. Please come with me, love and forgive each other. Our lives too short. When grace with love and forgiveness too long, when full of stress and hatred. That's it, thank you. So let me, um, if you would like to have any questions, please feel free to get up and ask. I also want to put in a, a comment and say that uh, the you know, folks at the University of Maryland, Persian Studies, they wanted to be here. Unfortunately, school is out and they're all on vacation. So they asked me to extend their apologies that they're not here. However, this is a fantastic program and translating poems are not easy. And you really see when you read the original uh, and hear it and then you see the English, it really is a task to 
be able to convey, um, uh, but they've done such a beautiful job translating. So I'm really, really pleased to hear this, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yes. Thank you. The, so uh, he, uh, he's asking if the uh, writing, uh, Afghan Women's Writing Project exists in Afghanistan. The writing, uh, um, Afghan Women's Writing Project is an online project, but we do have office in Afghanistan. And uh, we have monthly workshops that women come to the uh, office and then uh, they have diary or English workshops. And also, it's a very secure space for women who do not want to go to um, like cafe nets that there are men there or they are get harassed. So it's a very safe and calm place to come and write their pieces if they want and use the internet and send their pieces online. Yes. Thank you for having us. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, those who participate in these programs, in terms of demographics, do they belong to a certain age group? Uh, uh, are they more in some region than others? Uh, do they uh, have a particular profile, if you want, um, as they are writing? Or is it across the board, across age groups, you know? Uh, how would you describe the women who participate in the project, the 455 participants? So um, the demo demographic for this woman, the demo demographic for this woman, um, so you ask what are the dem demographic for women, and uh, what are the age groups for these right. women, for the participants of these uh, online workshops. The women who participate are different age groups. We have teenagers, we have women who are married and in their older ages. The oral stories, there are grandmothers who they um, like um, voice or somebody, uh, they tell somebody, they record their voice and then another reader write those and then uh, we have somebody to narrate those. So we have different age groups and uh, we work in uh, six uh, provinces in Afghanistan. Uh, I would believe that most of our writers are from uh, the big cities uh, like um, Kabul and Herat, but um, we have writers from uh, um, Kandahar. Kandahar is more conservative and it's a Pashtun, uh, Pashtun city, so we would uh, see less women participate because of the security reason and the conservative um, um, culture of the uh, city. So um, the way that women reach out to each other through this program, the way that it works is that um, we don't announce like we accept students come here. So it's word of mouth between the students. Uh, a student knows like she she's part of she's participant and she tells a friend and that friend uh, become part of the workshop. So because of the security reason, we always want somebody confirm the participation of another uh, students. And there, we have students who um, do, not, we do not publish their name. They just write in their pen name um, or anon anonymously because of the security reasons. Some of their parents do not want them to write or their brothers or uncles. So um, we respect uh, their situation. Yes. Uh, kind of going along with that, I was wondering where your website is hosted and if you've had some uh, attacks on the website um, from the project or uh, that's another security concerns for um, how people's phones, you're saying they're writing under uh, pseudonyms. But mm -hmm. 
um, the website is um, the IT personnel and everybody, the main um, staff uh, are here in the United States. And that's one of the reasons that we want to have uh, the editor and some of the main staff to have in, in the United States in case something goes wrong in Afghanistan because of the security situation. But our main way of like connecting with the students is through uh, internet. And uh, usually most of the students um, have a phone, uh, phone that they can connect to um, internet and write or something or send something. And we do provide them uh, with um, a small computers uh, and uh, like laptops and also internet stick that they can um, stay home and use them. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, but they are very. Um, um, uh, they think a lot about the security of this woman and how to run the uh, organization in a way that um, they keep the woman safe. Yeah. Any other question? Hey, I want to thank Mahnaz John and you. Hamshira, your lovely sister. Mr. and Mrs. Rezaei, again, thank you very much. And also from Mujdan John and the other speakers as well, thank you very much for all of you coming. This was fantastic, and I hope to see this expand. This was very nice. Thank you very much for making time, especially on a, I know, a hot summery day like this. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.